What's up everyone? Welcome back to Living Survival. Today we're going to take a look at a product that I've been waiting to get for over a year. It's the Lightsaber Max rollable solar panel from Powerfilm. Now just over a year ago, I was able to test out the prototype of the Lightsaber Max, this being the final shipped version. They did clean it up a bit from the prototype. So let's go over some of the specs of the Lightsaber Max. Now as I said, I reviewed the prototype or took a look at the prototype a little over a year ago and there were some issues with that. We'll go over some of the changes in those. They've also upgraded it now to an 18,000 milliamp integrated battery and that's one of the great features of this unit. So not only is it portable, it's lightweight, it's packable, meaning you can tell by the form factor here that you can slip it down in a pack, you can attach it to the outside of a pack. Uh, much more so, in my opinion, than the square uh, foldable solar panels. This one being a rollable solar panel and having the integrated uh, USB battery bank on the inside makes it a fantastic device that you don't need a whole lot of extras. You don't need extra cables. You don't need the extra power pack. You simply take this unit and this unit itself out with you where you would need solar power. You charge it during the day and you have that, uh, that energy or that stored capacity whenever you need it. So made in the USA, again, Powerfilm is a company that designs and develops uh, foldable and rollable and also uh, solid solar panels for the military. So they do really high end, they do really high quality work. Now, some of that being, uh, of course, integrated into the Lightsaber Max. There are a few issues though that they could probably clean up a little bit for consumer use. On the input side, you not only have a USB-C input, so you can charge it quickly from the wall, but you also have a 12 volt input. So using the included adapter, you can plug this into your car, for example, and charge it that way, giving you a quicker charge. I believe it's about four to eight hours from the wall and uh, four to six hours from the sun. Now, I did leave this in full sun and I was amazed at how quickly it did charge and I drained it all the way down. Again, it's hard to tell if you're getting much of a charge due to the fact that it has that built-in battery. So therefore, you don't really pass through to a device directly from the sun. It's charging the internal battery. The internal battery is what's gonna charge your device and there's some pros and cons to that as well. As far as the outputs go, you have uh, dual 2.5 amp USB outputs and you also have a 12 volt output. So again, having that 12 volt input and that 12 volt output is something that you don't really see on these portable solar panels. The only other one that I've reviewed is the Goal Zero. Now I do like the Goal Zero. It's small, it's lightweight, it's 12 volt capable and it's waterproof, something the Power Film or the Lightsaber Max is not. I'd call it semi water resistant. So taking a look at some of those features here, you have the end caps, which were not on the original version. The original version simply just had sort of this unfinished side. So I'm happy to see that they did some end caps. It would have been nice if they uh, somehow made this waterproof or at least more water resistant. Uh, in the winter especially, I've noticed that when I set this down on the ground or even on a pack that I set on the ground, you know, you can get snow and ice and rain sort of built up. Not that you would leave this in a downpour, but just using it around camp, I found that I did get some moisture in here. So it would be nice in a future version maybe to waterproof this a bit more. Uh, but these are, you can tell these are really solid uh, caps here. So they are a little bit cumbersome to get on. You sort of got to stick these uh, notches here into the holes on the ends, but they do have a really nice snug fit. And again, being designed or being a company that designs for the military, you know, they're designing this stuff to be tough. It's sort of got this uh, little chintzy thread on it here and it sort of gets in the way when you're rolling it up. So that's definitely somewhat of an issue. So it'd be nice to see in a future version if they could somehow clean this up a little bit more. So we can look closer at this side here. You can see you have your 12 volt input, USB-C input, and then your power button. If you press the power button once, it's gonna give you an LED readout. One thing you notice about this bar here is that it sort of bleeds together. It doesn't really bother me. The camera kind of makes it look worse than it is. But uh, you know, it would be maybe nice if they separated these chambers a little bit more, just so you could tell in a quicker glance 
at the percentage that you have but you can tell pretty quickly that I'm at about 50% uh, on the battery bank there so you just press it once it's going to give you that status readout we can flip around to the other side again you can see that uh, that hard cap there we can pop that off you have your dual uh, outputs over here 12 volt output and then there's also a light I don't mind the light I think it's cool to have a light on this but what I do mind is that if they're going to give it a light, they might as well give it an SOS function or at least some sort of signaling function. Uh, you double click the uh, button on the other side and, you, and it goes to high. You double click again and it goes to low. Double click again and it goes to off. So again, it's nice to have that integrated light on there. I have used that before on uh, USB banks that have the uh, integrated light. But again, it'd be nice if they added maybe an SOS function to it. So you could set this maybe on the top of your car uh, or something like that. You know, this would be a great item to keep in a car kit. That's where this is going to go for me. And again, I like the form factor better than the uh, rectangular uh, foldable panels just because I can attach this to the side of my pack. I can slip it underneath the seat, you know, even in a glove box, it's small enough to do so. All right, so pros being, again, that it's lightweight and portable. It's got that built-in 18,000 milliamp battery. It uses the 12 volt in and out, which is nice. It, it makes it so that you can charge it faster. It's anamorphic, meaning that it is uh, rollable. And so if a portion of the panel gets damaged, it's still gonna continue to work. And if a portion of it is not hitting the sun, it's still gonna work, rather than monocrystalline panels that generally, if it gets damaged in any way, will just simply not work. Or if the sun covers up the, uh, the panel itself, it won't work. So it, it, that and the fact that it's pretty rugged as far as the whole unit goes, I like that. So overall, it's a great unit. I'm happy with it. Some of the cons being that it's very expensive. It runs about $340, which is about, mm, about $140 more than you'd pay for a Goal Zero. Now, of course, the Goal Zero uh, doesn't have the, cap the form factor that this has and it doesn't have the anamorphic panel. So, you know, some different technologies going on here. I hope the price point comes down on that as well. Another few complaints here are these end caps, although these end caps are very beefy. They're tied on with this tiny little string here. They are kind of a pain to get in and out. And then again, you don't get any waterproofing or any weather resistance on there that I definitely would like to have on a, on a uh, colder and more wet day that would definitely be nice and then as far as these attachments go on the original prototype i believe it attached with a magnet so when you rolled it up it magnet closed here i really liked that i preferred that way more so than these sort of these hair bands that they have on here and i do give you some spares i don't know if they've been breaking them and testing but it can be kind of a pain when you're rolling this panel up this gets in the way if it's not attached on there and when you go to uh you know bungee this around the unit itself this can get tangled in there so it's just kind of cumbersome uh not that big of a deal but you know those little things that can be improved would make this an even better unit so i think maybe a magnet closure and then having some more uh, attachment points so you can see here that you do have the two grommets uh, on here it'd be nice if you had maybe a couple more grommets on there and then on the other side of the panel you can see here that you just kind of get hung up sometimes on these uh end caps here you got to be sure to shut those now i'm hung up on the other side got to be sure to shut those before you deploy or roll this back up now on the other end here there's also no attachment points i mean there's these little holes here which i guess you could string some sort of uh cordage through there and then be able to attach it that way so just maybe some more attachment points would be nice especially when you're attaching this to a pack uh, you know, you kind of just got to be creative with how you're doing it. And again, they've made it to be uh, more sleek and streamlined. So I appreciate the fact that, you know, they didn't design that in there. But for my uses, you know, I'm definitely going to rig this up a little bit differently. One last con I have with this particular unit, and it's probably because I've tested so many units, is that this does not have auto restart. The Goal Zero does have auto restart, and that is a handy feature when you run out of juice in your USB battery bank. So if you drain this all the way down completely to zero, which I did, I hooked up devices to it, drained it all the way down to zero, threw it in the sun, hooked up my phone, and of course it did start charging the phone, but then I took the sun away, I covered the solar panel up, of course it stopped charging the phone, removed the uh, the cover again with the sun and the phone did not start charging again. So in order to start charging, I had to hit the button 
on the side again to activate the uh, internal battery bank because really what the panel is doing is it's charging that and then that's passing through to your devices. So it'd be nice if they could come up with a way to, uh, to make this thing auto restart. As I said, overall I'm happy with the product. It's going to work for the purposes that I have for it, which is to leave it in the car, be a part of my car kit, have that capability to charge when I'm on the go, and also that it's lightweight and portable enough to take with me hiking. I've hesitated in taking other solar panels when I go backpacking or camping or hiking because it's just not that portable. I worry about sticking those uh, hard, harder form factor panels down in my packs and breaking them or having something go wrong. This I can just clip to the outside of the pack, rolled up and it's going to work great. Price wise for the thin film technology is still a little bit high. So again, unless you have a particular uh, purpose or you fit that particular niche of people that can use a product like this, it may be a little out of reach for mass consumers at this point. For the price, I'd like to see them fix the cons that I have with it, which is reinforce those end caps to maybe make them more waterproof, make the whole unit a little bit more water resistant, and then add some more attachment points to be able to attach it uh, more easily to things like packs and just simply hanging it around camp. I love when companies come out with products like this that are different from anything else out there and this is certainly that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Please give it a big thumbs up for me. Make sure you leave me a comment below letting me know what you think of the Lightsaber Max. If you haven't already done so, please click that red subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of new videos.